Okay, so we're going to solve out the, uh, the elevator problem. Uh, remember, just vocabulary-wise, that these are also sometimes called Atwood machines. Uh, if we kind of analyze this problem, we have two things we need to solve. We need to solve uh, both the acceleration of the elevator and the tension that exists in the cable. So we're going to start by focusing in on the acceleration part. And if we kind of analyze the problem, what's going on here, uh, both of these objects are being suspended by a cable. So both of the free body diagrams for the objects would look something like this. If this were the object, we'll have FG pulling down, and we'll have tension force pulling up. So those are the two forces acting on both of the objects. Um, we have to kind of analyze what's going to happen. So if we kind of look at uh, the masses that are given here, we have the mass of the elevator and we have the mass of the counterweight. Now the mass of the elevator is greater, which means Fg for the elevator is going to be greater uh, than Fg for the counterweight. So right away we can see what's going to happen with the system is that the elevator is going to go down and the counterweight is going to go up. Now if we look at this conceptually a little bit, if we consider just the counterweight, so if we just kind of zoom in on this item over here, and we think about what's going on, on with, the, uh, with the object. Since it's being suspended, we know that the downward acceleration is that of gravity. So the downward acceleration here is already negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So in other words, if we kind of analyze this, if this thing is to move up, then the acceleration in the upward direction has to be greater than gravity. So in other words, it's going to have to be greater than 9.8 meters per second squared in the upward direction in order to get this thing to actually go upwards. So if we kind of relate that to force, in this case, F tension has to be greater than Fg, otherwise the counterweight's not going to move. Okay? So if we look at the elevator on this side, uh, the elevator kind of has the same scenario going on in the fact that it's uh, suspended from the cable, which means it has a downward acceleration right now of 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, we'll call that negative since it's in the downward direction. As, uh, as this system begins to move, and we've already established that the elevator is going to move downwards, uh, if there were nothing attached to it, so in other words, if the, if the counterweight didn't exist, then it would accelerate downwards at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. However, since the counterweight is attached, uh, it's going to actually impede the motion, so it's going to slow it down, which means the actual downward acceleration over here, uh, we could kind of notate that, uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be less than, uh, less than G, because it's going to have this tension force, Ft, that is taking away some of that acceleration. All right, so conceptually, that's, uh, that's kind of the way that we want to look at this. That's going to help us when we solve out the tension in the cable, and it kind of helps us to understand what's going on. So if we begin to kind of solve out the acceleration of this system, let's get this over a little bit, uh, we're going to analyze what's happening. Really what we have uh, are two forces in the downward direction. We have Fg of the elevator and we have Fg of the counterweight. Those are the two forces that we're considered with when dealing with the acceleration. So I'm going to solve both of those out over here. We're going to label these out because we're going to end up with a bunch of numbers. So I'm going to write, write out elevator and we'll draw a line there. And I'm going to solve out Fg for the elevator. So Fg equals ma, and we're just talking about the elevator, so the mass here is 1550 kilograms, and since it's Fg, we're using 9.8, so we'll get an answer here of Fg, and we'll keep this with three sig figs, so we're looking at 15,200 newtons, that's the Fg of the elevator. Now we're going to switch gears. Uh, let's talk about the counterweight. So the counterweight, we're going to solve the same thing. We're going to solve Fg. So Fg equals Ma. We're now talking about the counterweight. So the counterweight has a mass of 1250 kilograms. Acceleration due to gravity, 9.8. So Fg of the counterweight is going to be with three sig figs, 12,300 newtons. Okay, 
So both of those uh, are going to go towards allowing us to solve for the acceleration of the system in the fact that this is going to be on the left hand side, this is going to be on the right hand side of the pulley. This is ultimately going to win out because it's a larger force, so the elevator is going to win, the elevator is going to move downwards, the counterweight will move upwards, but a lot of the, uh, the FG of the elevator is canceled out due to the FG of the counterweight. So what we need to do next is solve a net force. So net force is simply going to be FG of the elevator minus FG of the counterweight. Now I'll abbreviate here. And we've solved both of these numbers, so solving that force is actually pretty easy at this point. Uh, it's just going to be FG 15,200 minus 12,300. And we're going to come up with a, an F net of 2,900 newtons. Now when it comes to solving the acceleration of the system, uh, or just the elevator, or just the counterweight, uh, we want to look at this net force. So this net force is going to drive the, uh, the acceleration. And looking at this, uh, we're now going to talk about the whole system. So we're going to write out the equation we need to solve for acceleration. There's A. And if we're using the net force, this involves both the objects, the elevator and the counterweight. So the mass that we use is going to have to be the mass of both objects. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. And the force we're going to use is 2,900 newtons. We're going to divide that by the total mass. So the total mass is going to be... Twenty eight hundred kilograms. And now we're ready to solve. We can solve for acceleration. Twenty nine hundred divided by twenty eight hundred. And we're getting an overall acceleration here of just depending on sig figs, we'll go back to keeping three one oh four meters per second squared. That's gonna be the acceleration of the system. Okay, so that solves the first part. The second part is tension. So uh, maybe we'll draw a little line here. We'll separate this out. It's not quite as involved, but there's a little bit more conceptual work when it comes to solving the tension in this problem. To analyze the tension, we have to go back over here where we talked about uh, the accelerations and what's happening with the accelerations. Now, the, uh, the acceleration for the counterweight, if we look at the counterweight, and really with the tension, we want to pick one of the two objects. I'm going to pick the counterweight. You could easily have picked the elevator. Uh, both will work out the same, to the same number as long as you do everything correctly. Uh, when we go to do this, uh, we want to look at just one object. So we're going to be talking about the mass of one object. And if we want tension, remember that tension is a force. So uh, we're going to use our force equation one more time. Uh, F equals MA, where the F that we're solving for now is tension, so FT. We're talking about just one object, and if we're talking about the counterweight, we know the mass of the counterweight. So I'm going to go ahead and start plugging stuff in here, where the mass is 1,250 kilograms. Now the acceleration is kind of the tricky part. We already said over here that it has to be, on this side, greater than 9.8, otherwise this whole system is not going to work. So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to take our 9.8 and we're going to add in our net acceleration to find the overall acceleration in the upward, or actually the overall acceleration total for the, uh, for the counterweight. So it's going to be the net acceleration in the upward direction. So 9.8 and 1.04 times 1250. And we're going to get an FT equal to and round it off with sig figs. We're going to call it 13,600, and that's going to be newtons because it's a force. There's the tension in the cable. If you would have solved the, the elevator, I'm not sure that's on the screen here. Uh, if you would have solved the elevator, you would have used a similar process, FT equals MA. Uh, force of tension in the cable equals the mass of the elevator, 1550. And our acceleration this time, if we look at 9.8, is we talked here that it would be less than 9.8 because it has essentially this counterweight that it has to drag behind it. So that's going to slow down the rate of acceleration. It's going to slow it down by a rate equal to the net acceleration of the system, which is 1.04. So we're actually going to subtract out 1.04 on this side. 
And now we can solve for ft of the elevator. And we'll see if we get a similar number like we would expect to. And we'll run this through. And with sig figs, I'm coming up with 13,600 newtons. Okay, so you see that these two forces are equal because it's the tension in one cable. Okay, so the tension you would expect to be the same, and we just proved that it is uh, on both sides. So everything is uh, exactly as we, uh, we expected. You would only need to solve out one of these to prove the tension. So uh, pick your favorite and, uh, and stick with it.